when you were born, mm. you weighed one pound, didn't you? Yeah, something like that. I was born and I died three times. I was seven weeks premature and uh, the doctor said to me, Dad, he said, right, he's here, but he's not very strong or he's not very big. And my dad meant to pick me up in his hand and looked at me and he went, oh, he's OK. <laughs> You've certainly grown in the meantime, haven't you? Just a little. Without family, what do we got? You can have all the friends in the world and you can have all the hangers on and all the do-gooders and patters on the back. But as soon as your money's gone and your fame's spent and you're a bit older, they all drift away. And I believe you can only ever have four or five real friends that you can actually count on, if you're lucky. For me, I only have a very scarce few friends, maybe two or three, that ain't family members. I'll just make this clear for everyone to, to listen to and understand. I ain't a yes man for nobody. If I say something, I'll back it up. I ain't afraid of the consequences, because if I'm man enough to say it, I'm man enough to back it up 100%. If I was a homophobe, I'd say it right now on camera. I would, I, would, I wouldn't think twice about it. I'd say it straight. If I was a sexist, I'd say that straight as well. Because nothing you men and the world can do to me to can make me think, oh, I shouldn't say that or whatever. I'll say what I've got to say. And if, I, if I'm any of these things, I will openly admit it. I'm a believer in Christ. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and all my hands up and I'll say that. And no matter how many people it offends, I will say it. But if I said, I'm this and I'm that and I'm that, I would say it. But I'm not a homophobe, I'm not a sexist, I'm not any of those, I'm not a bigot, I'm not a racist. I'm a gypsy. I'm, I'm being racist towards for the past 27 years. You don't need me complaining about it, do you? I don't write any newspaper articles about it. You know, it is what it is. When you make comments like that, it can be construed as you being homophobic, that you do not like homosexuals. Just ask me then, ask me straight. Are well, you a homophobe, Tyson? No, definitely not. I wouldn't be a very good Christian if I hated anybody, would I? If Jesus loves the world, I love the world. I can actually say I haven't got no hate for anybody. I haven't any enemies. I don't hate any race, colour, creed, generation, nobody. You know, my team's one of the most diverse teams amongst religions in, in the world of boxing. We've got Jamaicans in there, we've got Pakistanis in there, we've got Indians in there, Christians, Muslims. We're all united. What about that? Why don't they broadcast that? Tyson Fury is uniting the world, uniting Christians and Muslims in a time when, it, when, when everything's up in the air. You know, we don't hear about that, do we? We don't hear about the good things that I'm doing. We just hear about the, the comments that people want to twist and try and make me sound like I hate people and that I hate the world. I love all of God's children. We're all God's children. No matter what somebody does, it's not up to me to judge them. It's not up to you to judge them. God will judge them in his good, good due time. I think if the police are going to waste the taxpayers' money on investigating Tyson Fury for being hated of somebody, then that's just a joke, isn't it? It's a waste of taxpayers' money again, isn't it? So, you know... I don't hate anybody, I've said that a thousand times, and if anybody should be investigated for being hated, it's me, isn't it? Because I, I think I'm the most, one of the most hated sportsmen in the country at the moment. Why do you feel so that? I want to file a claim against everybody else. <laughs> Compensation, victims crime compo. Here we are, me. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna um, get hatred crimes, I want to hatred everybody else. <laughs> in all seriousness, do you, uh, do you feel hated? Do I feel hated? Not really. It's all, today's news is tomorrow's chip paper, isn't it? It is what it is. The greatest heavyweights in the world have lost, come back, yeah. rebuilt, etc, etc. Do you have a fear of getting beat? You're unbeaten as a professional. Do you have a fear of getting beat? Does that worry you? Or? Not really. We'll find out September, October 24th, won't we? Um, it is what it is, isn't it? If you lose to a better man, you lose to a better man. My outlook on life is totally different to the, to the normal person's. I look at things if, if I'll win, then I'll win. If I'll lose, then I'll lose. No big scene, no big scenario. I'm not going to go and cry about it. I won't go in a, uh, my confidence ain't going to go or nothing. It's just, it's the way people are built, isn't it? It's what they're made of inside. It's, um, listen, everybody loses fights. The greats lose, they come back, whatever. But it's how you lose, it's not... It's not losing the fight, it's how you lose and then what you do from there. And it's how much you want it as well. You've got to, the, the fact of wanting to be something for yourself more than for other people has a lot to play in, in sports and in anything. And if you are doing something because you can make money out of it or you can do something like that and you don't really want to do it deep down, 
and then you lose. It's a good excuse for you to just pack it in, isn't it? And that's what happens with a lot of them. Like you could compare David Price to Vladimir Klitschko, really, because Vlad got knocked out three times, like proper done in. Um, but he, he didn't turn his back on fighters and he didn't like, his mind wasn't shagged. He got beat, like knocked out and he went down and he couldn't get up. Where on David Price's um, thing, he didn't want it type of thing. He'd gone in a shell and you can't recover from that. Going on to back on to me, that ain't never going to happen because when I fight, I fight with a passion. I fight with a burning desire. And if I get knocked out or dropped or whatever, then so be it. I can't do any better than my best. As long as I know I've gone in there and fought the best of my ability every single time, then there's no excuses, there's no hard feelings. I've lost to a better man if I lose to somebody, you know what I'm saying? So I would never be in that situation, actually. What's, what's more important for you to finish your career whenever that finishes? Is it the money that you've got in the bank or is it how you're remembered as a fighter, what you've won at whatever level? What, what's at the top of that for you? There's nothing, there isn't nothing. After boxing, for me, there's nothing. During boxing, for me, there's nothing. What do you mean nothing? There is, it's just emptiness, isn't it? Look, what does a belt mean? What does a championship mean? Right, we just went over all this this morning again, me and my dad. I've won already seven, seven titles, belts, whatever. Number one in Britain, Europe, Commonwealth, whatever. Number one in the world, mandatory. What does it all mean? It means nothing. All right, I might, I'm, after this fight, it'll be very, uh, very well, well to do. But what does it all mean? Because we can only, I'll still be dressed like this, a tramp, with a pair of trainers on and a tracksuit. And I'm still going to jump in that car outside and go to whatever I'm going to do. So it doesn't really mean anything. And as to be remembered as a fighter, fuck remembering fighters. It's about activity, it's about now. Remembering fighters is, people can sit here and remember them and they're just memories, aren't they? It's about doing it now, living that dream today. And all the people who've been champions and, and done their best in their career from the past, they have lived that time today. But now, they're only has-beens. I know that sounds a bad way, word to say, has-beens, but they only are. Look at all the great champions from the past. They're only has-beens, aren't they? And I think all, all great sportsmen from the past envy current people. So again, the answer to that question, what keeps me going, what drives me, what am I aiming for? I ain't aiming to be a great champion, I ain't aiming to be a millionaire, I ain't aiming to be remembered, I ain't aiming for nothing. I'm just living day by day, taking it one day at a time, really. I'm living to die, basically. I'm aiming for the coffin, where we're all going, buried. I'm aiming to be put in, I don't know, aiming for the coffin, yeah, that's it. So we're all going to die sooner or later, so it's what you do while we're here. I'm, I'm doing boxing, you're doing interviewing, Peter's a trainer. You know, it's, it is what it is. Everyone's got their own job in life, haven't they? And I'm doing my job, that's it. I'm living day to day, eating, surviving. That's it. Look forward to the weekend, going home, seeing the wife and kids. And I can't wait to get back into training camp. So my whole life should be a training camp, really. Because when I'm out of it, I'm depressed. I don't feel good, I feel like shit. So it is what it is. Nothing drives me, nothing. I ain't interested in titles, I ain't interested in money, I ain't interested in business, I ain't interested in property. I feel it drives me, being stress-free. Being able to just do what I want, like, and not be bothered about jumping in a flash car or going to a flash restaurant or what people think of me or high society people. I'm not interested in it. I know that sounds daft because why would I be boxing? Why am I here today? But I, I really, I've been saying it for a long time, I just really ain't interested. I go in there and, and it's something that I love to do, I love to fight. I love, I love being involved in the gym, I love training and that while I'm doing it, but at the end of the day, it is what it is, isn't it? At the end of the day, I'll be another bear bum in the shower after it's all finished. And there'll be somebody else, another 50 million people coming through in the world. And you're just a memory at the end of the day. So where does the financial side come into it for you? Listen, if I wanted to retire now, I could. It is what it is. Money, uh, the motivation ain't money for me. Not interested. Listen, if I want to go and get a burger, I can go and get a burger. Whatever I want to do, I can do. I used to think it was about becoming successful, but what is success? Success is being happy and being contented 
and being happy with your environment and the people around you. I think that's success. Success ain't driving a flash car, living in a big house or wearing some thousand pound shoes. That ain't success. Success is being happy and doing the right things for what makes you happy. That's it. I actually but, accused Vladimir of being an emotional wreck in the press conference, but I actually rephrase that because he's a stable person. He's normal. He's what you call a normal athlete. Standard. Normal, good looking man. Yeah. Very good at boxing, good at his job, good at everything. Look at him. He's in great shape. Look at me. I'm the emotional wreck. Me. I'm the mad one. I think I'm screw loose in the head sometimes because no, truthful, like not talking stupidness, right? I can wake and up I in the morning. I'm not even joking. Seriously. I'm not. I'm not joking. I know you're not. That's gospel truth. I'm not joking. I know you're not. Right. I can wake up in the morning. Everything's fine. The afternoon, I could commit suicide. And it's the same with everything I do. I could go go to the uh, to the gym to lift one weight and stay in there for four hours. And what you call special people have to be sometimes eccentric, emotional fools. You have saw these rocket scientists and stuff like that. Sometimes you look at him and you think, that guy's crazy. But then he's got an IQ of 258. So sometimes special people are crazy. And, and Vladimir is a very good person, but he hasn't touched in the brain like me. He's a very good champion, but he isn't touched. And that's what I believe I am. I'm touched in the mind. Because if I wasn't, I wouldn't do the stuff I do, would I? Simple. It ain't rocket science. It's, it's black and white. You either do or you don't. And I'm like stuck in between. I don't know if I'm going to be that side or that side at either day. Every day I wake up's different. Some days I think like retire from boxing on top undefeated and don't give him his rematch. Yeah. Make him suffer that way. And other days I think, yeah, I'll fight him and knock him out. Other days I think, yeah, I'll fight him and take a dive. Other days I don't know what I'm going to do. And this is the truth. I ain't lying. I'm pouring it all out to you. Just so everything's on the table. You know what to expect on the night. Is that unpredictable? <laughs> but still, listen, what ex there's no excuses on my behalf, I can do my best and that's it. Win, lose or draw, I put, I put up my best fight. And if Vladimir beats me, then good luck to him, I shake his hand and say he's a better man. And obviously if I beat him, then I'm still in the same position. Still as sick as ever, still as depressed as life can be, and still don't really care if I die in any second of the moment. That's the way I live my life. And you can, my wife's there to verify. Is that correct or not? No, is it correct that I live like that or not? See, so she don't know what I'm going to do and I live with her. No one knows. My own father don't know what I'm going to do. So it is what it is. Thank you very much, guys. May the best man win. You're going to shake hands? There's the, the man. You're going to yeah. shake hands for the camera? There's both my hands. There you go. There's there my hand. Go. There's my heart. You're a good man. I got a decision over you. It doesn't mean anything. You can come back, knock me out, knock everybody else out. Good luck to you. That's Hello. it. Thanks a lot. I can't this. say any fairer, can I? Yeah, Basically, all of the trash talk and all that, it is what it is. The man's a good fighter and I do what I do. Because what happens is everybody loves a winner. Um, and everybody loves to, like we were talking about, success. They see a nice car, they see someone doing well. They think, ooh, that's success. I want that shit, so I'll jump on board with that. And there's a lot of that. So they're not real people, are they? They're not real fans. The only real fans I've got is the people that's been there from day one. And everybody, you know who you are. From the beginning, you've been there, supported me all the way through. And everybody who, who knows who they are, they know it. And all the arse lickers, they know it. And all the hangers on, they know it as well. So I don't need to mention names. Everybody knows who they are and what they are. I've got fans out there who've supported me from day dot. They don't want anything off me. They don't want to be famous. They don't want to be around me, blah, blah, blah. They just support me because they like my style. They like my attitude. They like the way I do boxing, basically. And then there's people who, who want to be around you because you're famous and they want to be seen to be liking you because it, it might be an in-trend at the minute or something. You know what I mean? People are like sheep, aren't they? They can be controlled by what other people's opinions are. And I don't think that's a real person, me. Not at all. On a serious note now though, I, I just bought that trailer over there, yeah, for this camp, and I'm really considering having Christmas in it, really? pulling it in my me, um, me house yard and having Christmas in the trailer, because I actually prefer 
Christmas in a closed environment for some reason. Imagine this all now, like, heating on, Christmas tree over there, telly, like, going. Yeah. Kids running wild in here. Sandwiches getting made, cups of tea, mince pies. Why don't you put it to Paris, see what she thinks? Because. Just moved into a new house. Just got all settled in, so... I don't think she's going to fancy moving out again. Tell you what it is though, Coogan, yeah? You know what I like about a caravan, yeah? The rain on the roof. What, li listening to the rain yeah, on the roof? you don't hear it in the house. I'll tell you what, you sleep like a baby in it. So that's a good thing. So that's what I like about a caravan. The rest of it, you can keep it. But well, your one's alright. Like, I suppose your one's alright as well, isn't it? Is your one yeah. similar to this? Something similar, but just a different uh, brand. Listen, on a, on a serious base, I lived three years in a trailer when I got married. Every day, not like for training camp. Proper living. And it wasn't bad, you just got to be organised. Nothing bad about it. I actually had a better um, better time in living in the trailer than I do now, living in a house. But um, it was good good times. The only shit thing about trailers is you have to go outside for a piss in the um, in the cold. Well, these have got toilets in there. Yeah, but travellers don't use the toilet in a trailer. No? No. Why not? It's against the law. <laughs> no, seriously. You're not going to have a shit in there, are you, and then cook your food on there, like one step away from the kitchen? Oh, right, you're just talking about having, <laughs> <laughs> you're just talking about having a piss, though. But... Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to say it, but you forced me to say it. <laughs> okay. <All laughs> I right. said it, Anna. Imagine having a big turd in that toilet there, in that door, and then Peter's having his sandwich and a cup of tea there. Ripping me guts out fast and going down <laughs> in the toilet. <laughs> All yeah. right. It is what it is, isn't it? You know, I'm the biggest hypocrite in the world because I'll say, I'll talk about God one minute and then swear my head off the next minute. But I don't believe that's the way forward anyway. I don't believe, like, pr trying to um, pretend that you're something. If you're a good person inside, you're a good person. All right, I swear a lot, but I'm a good person inside, so... Are you better not to swear and be a horrible prick inside and then talk about God? Or are you better to do a bit of swearing and be actually a nice person inside and try and tell people to do right from wrong? Which one's the better way, really? I'd say that my way is. Because if you're sly inside, then you can't fool anybody. You're not fooling God, are you? Nine, nine out of ten people will know you're a sly cunt inside anyway. I say what I say and that's it. I don't, I don't hate anybody. I don't um, talk about people. I'm not really interested. I don't have any enemies. Whatever people say or do doesn't really mean anything to me. I'm not really interested. It is what it is. Um, God, on, when I get involved in God, my life goes happy and I feel better. When I get drift away from God, my life turns into turmoil and it all becomes a load of crap. So I'd say God for me is a saviour. Well, he obviously is. But it's um, something that I've always done from being a kid not just took it up recently something i've always been involved in it been around and it seemed to be whenever i have massive terms off away from going to the church or reading the bible or talking about god then my life turns upside down and i do bad things well not a bad thing i've never done anything bad i've done nothing nothing bad at all really it's all white sort of stuff and uh it is what it is but i believe when you're uh doing bits and pieces and reading and talking to people about it and you feel better anyway better to have a belief in something that you go into a better place and and that you can you can be glorified and you can be trapped better than to just think we're going to sit here and die and then that's it because there'd be no point